Hello, this is Doomed Yet, and I'm back again on Bremster's channel to solve a puzzle. Uh, this one is called Glyphs Number no. 4 by Damasosos92. Uh, this is a little bit different of a puzzle compared to what Bremster tends to feature on this channel. Uh, according to the setter, this is a five star puzzle for difficulty. And uh, Bremster thought, hey, let's send this to Doomed Yet and uh, harass him. I mean, uh, offer him the opportunity to. Uh, solve the puzzle on the channel and, and give this a shot. And I'm familiar with uh, Damasosos92 as a setter. Uh, I've seen a couple of their puzzles before and uh, they do tend to be difficult, but they also tend to have some really nice logic in it. So I'm sure this one will have the same in store. Let's see how I do. But first, um, let's go through the rules. Um, if you've never solved a chaos construction puzzle before, um, you'll notice that we don't have the typical nine by nine grid lines, um, we have more of an open grid. And the first rule is that we need to divide the grid into regions, each consisting of nine orthogonally connected cells. So we'll have nine regions. And each row, column, and region must contain the digits one to nine once each. So it's entirely possible for us to have a three by three box still as a region, and this would need to contain the digits one to nine. But it's also possible that we have a region that looks something like this. And in that case, still, we need to have the digits one to nine once each. But we're not restricted on the shape of the region, just that they all have to consist of orthogonally connected cells. OK, the next rule is that each line, whether it branches or not, uh, must intersect exactly three different regions. So if we take a look at this line here, we know that there's three cells in the line. So uh, we'll have this one being in one region, this one being in a second region, and this one being in a third region. Um, on this, this line here, for example, there's five cells. We have to have exactly three regions uh, on this line, uh, not more, not less. And in addition, uh, the digits along the line must be consecutive. Not quite the same as a Ren band. They don't all have to be like a consecutive set of digits in any order. This just means that you can think of these as like a white crappie dot in between each of these adjacent or um, orthogonally di diagonally adjacent cells. And I'm told by the setter for clarification, this is considered to be one connected line for the purposes of this rule. Okay, and the last rule here is the digits along this little killer clue, this um, indicated diagonal must sum to the given total. So these five cells here must sum to 18 at the end of the puzzle. Um, those are the rules. If you'd like to give this a shot, again, five-star difficulty, uh, worth trying for sure, um, but there'll be a link under the video. But I'm going to give this a try. Um, we will restart the timer. And let's go. So. One of the, I want to be drawing in region borders here in red. Um, so we know that the lines must be part of three different regions. So if we look at this line here, we know that we're going to have a region border on each of these areas, and we're going to have three different regions in these cells. So like we couldn't have these of the same region because it wouldn't that this line would not be able to contain three different regions. Uh, similar thing here. Let's actually color this one here, because this is a little bit tougher to see if you've not done these before. Uh, but this cell here, let me actually not make that red. I'll make that purple. Um, we know that this border here, this is only a three cell line, so we need to have a border here. Now, this line goes down here, so actually there's going to be a border between these two cells, uh, because we know that this has to be a third region, otherwise there'd only be two regions on the line. And then this line here, we're, no, we're going to have three regions as well. Let me delete this coloring for now. Now, these bigger lines we don't know as much about because these four, for example, could be in one region. And then we could have a third region in these two cells, and then or a second region in these two cells, and then a third region in these three. That would be fine. We just have to remember that the digits would have to be consecutive somehow. Uh, but I don't think the bigger lines are where we want to look because we don't know enough about the, the grid yet. This one doesn't look quite restricted yet. 
but we know at most two of these cells can be in any one region, but like these two could be in one and then these would be each in their own separate regions. That would be fine or vice versa. These two could be in one, these two can be in one, some combination like that. What I'm thinking is we may have to look at these sort of square lines. And in particular, I'm interested in this cell because when these regions grow, they all have to be orthogonally connected. And so this cell, let's make this a purple region. Uh, this is gonna have to get out uh, one way or another. It can't take any more than one cell in its region on this line because we only have four cells and we need to have three regions. So it needs to take one cell and then it has to go further, but it can either go this way or it can go this way but it couldn't do like this to get out, for example, because then we'd be stuck. We'd only have two regions on this line. So that means we actually do know that this cell is a different region from the purple region. Now, can this blue region go down? No. Okay, so if this blue region went down, let's just show this. This purple region now needs to get out. But now this line only has two different regions on it, so that's not allowed. So we have a border here. And I think we're gonna get the same thing here. Like if this is blue, again, purple needs to get out and we only have two regions on this line. So we can rule that out. Oops. Okay, so this, this blue region needs to get out as well, but it can get out like somewhere over in here, however, whatever shape it takes, but it could, it needs to take one of the cells on one of these two square regions. So we may need to visualize a little bit what happens here. It's like this pink or this purple region comes out. Can it turn up? If it did that, it, it would force a lot of things to happen. No, that actually breaks. Okay, this is a little bit tough to visualize, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, what is happening here. So let's, it doesn't matter which way this happens, if it goes this way or this way, uh, because it's gonna be rotationally symmetric. But let's just say it goes out here and then it escapes up through this square. We can't take this cell. Again, we need two different regions here, so we would need to come up. Now, where is this blue line going? It needs to go up again. It can't go here because now this region also needs to get out. We can't isolate a cell here. So this blue line would have to go up again. And again, it would have it would take two cells. So these would need to be in different regions. So we'd have a border right here. But now look, we've isolated these two cells as kind of on, on their own. They can't form a nine cell region. And the same thing, exact thing is gonna be true is if this grows up and then out this way. So if this grows up and then escapes here, again, we can't take either of these two cells. We'd have to take this one. This blue region would have to get out. Can't isolate this cell, so we'd have to take here. Now, this region would have to get out, um, or we'd have two cells on this line as one region, so we'd need a border here. And now again, we've isolated these two cells. So whichever way this goes, this has to continue this way or this way. But again, if we take these four cells, we have two cells on this line in the same region, so there'd be a border here or a border here. So let's visualize that. Um, let's, let's say it goes this way. We don't know yet, but we're just gonna pick a direction and see what happens. We'd have this as our borders again. We need two different regions here. Uh, this could still be the blue region, but this would have to be something different. So this pink would have to get out again. Now I'm wondering, can this turn up here at this point? 
uh, on this, this is going to correspond to this direction too. So you can think of this rotationally the same way. Um, can this go up? So if this goes up, we can't go left because we already have two cells in this line in purple. Um, and we can't go right anymore because these two need to be their own region here. So pink is going to have to go up again. Is that a problem? Don't quite see it being a problem. Because now we've got this region here, um, which can get out this way. This region can get out up there. So we've got you know, two separate regions here. We can have two separate regions here. And then this would be another separate region. That all seems OK. I'm just trying to think if there's a problem now with this region getting out. I think it can get out through here. And then we'd have a region coming up this way, a region coming up this way, or around. These could be the same. Does this have something to do with, like, is there a problem with the consecutive cells? I don't think so. So I wonder if it's a problem if it continues this way. goes this way, it needs to go all the way here. And again, we'd have like a division along here. But again, it could escape. Maybe we need to think about, like in this case, we also have A different region coming up this way. Um, whether it's this one coming up this and then another cell or another region, whichever way this goes. Just trying to visualize what's happening. So if the second region turned right, it would have to take these cells. And that would break. Uh, like we showed before, if purple turned up here, um, blue would have to get out. Uh, this way, and now this line only has two different colors on it. So the line comes out here, and I'm actually going to double color this because we know that these regions take one of them takes that cell, and the other one doesn't. And that's going to be true no matter what, because we already proved that the whatever region is here can't go up; it's going to go this way. And the other region that grows from this cell or this cell has to also go in, in the sort of the same pattern. So this is going to be one of the two regions. But either way, we have three distinct regions, and we have some borders we can draw in. And so because there's two cells on this line, this has to be a border to get three regions. Same there. OK, this is helpful. So this is going to have to grow at least one more because we can't get up through these cells. So that has to grow, and this has to grow. Now, how is blue getting out? Blue can take this cell and this cell, but it needs to get out of this little sort of cul-de-sac. Um, so it's going to have to take this cell here to, to escape. Uh, it, it can take all of these, or it can sort of just go one way and then get out a different way. Um, 
okay, here's something. So we know this cell is not blue. And the reason we know that is because, let's say it was, let's say this region does like this. Um, you can pretty clearly see here that this is going to isolate this cell as a single cell and, and not a full region. Um, the other way to see that is you see we need three different regions on here. We have one, two, we need the third region here. Um, so that's actually not allowed. So we know that this is a separate region. Now, can the pink get there? No. So that we're going to have a fourth region to color in here, and I think a fifth. So if pink were to take these four, um, the question is, can pink get to this cell? And the answer is no, because we already have four cells taken. So this would be five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it, it can't go out this far, so it would have to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would have to be the region. But now we have a four by four box here for blue, and it, it would need to be nine cells. So this is going to be a different color here. Let's make this one green. And I realize I'm probably going to quickly run out of colors, so I'll have to maybe repeat colors somewhere in the grid. Uh, the same exact thing is true is going to be here. So this can't be blue uh, because, again, if blue goes this way, we isolate this cell. Um, if blue goes this way, now we only have two colors on this uh, four cell line, or two regions on that line. So this isn't blue. It's also not yellow because, again, we, uh, if we if we get there in the most efficient way, we're going to isolate uh, a region here that's less than nine cells. Uh, so let's make this one. Uh, I don't want to use orange. I'm going to use light gray here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five regions started here. Now. Now I'm wondering about whether this pink region can come up this way. If it does, it needs to go up two cells because it couldn't take another cell on this line. Now gray would need to get out. Now blue needs to get out. Some, whichever one it takes, it has to get out at least to there. And actually would need to take one more. Uh, because it's it's choked off by uh, green and gray, which are different. Now, that's one thing we didn't prove yet, but um, actually, let me do that. Let me finish this thought first. So if green and gray are different, um, I think they're going to have to be. Um, now green needs to get out. And now yellow needs to get out because it only has a maximum of five cells. But now look what we did to this line here. We only have two different regions on it, and that's not allowed. So this, um, if you solve phenomenal puzzles before or other chaos construction, this this comes up a lot where you you have one region bend, and then it forces a lot of other things to happen. Not very pretty, but also broken. So let's not do that. But that assumes that green and gray are different regions. And I, I'm pretty sure just based on how what's going to happen to blue, that these can't be the same. But let's just prove it to ourselves. Let's go the, the biggest way around we can to get nine cells. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If these were all the same, let's say that they weren't different. Now again, we only have seven cells here for blue to be in, and that's not allowed. So uh, these do have to be Green and gray do have to be different. But now we know pink can't go up. Um, and I think that by symmetry, the same thing is going to be true of yellow, but we'll prove that uh, quickly here. So uh, if yellow comes out, green has to grow at least to here. Blue has to come out to at least to here. Gray needs to come out. And then purple needs to come out. And again, we broke this circle here. Okay, uh, so pink is actually going to have to go here, but now again we've got um, we need three regions, so those will have to be different. Pink is going to have to come out this way. Yellow is going to have to come out all the way to here. 
Let me get some more borders in here. Okay. Now again, I think we're going to get a new uh, a new region starting here. Uh, this couldn't be gray. Uh, we know that from before, where if we try to make this go out as far as it can, we've isolated three cells here, um, which can't be can't fulfill a, a full region. So um, this is not gray. It's not pink. It's not going to be able to be blue because again, um, we're going to end up isolating uh, too few cells here in this little area. Don't think it can be green. Uh, six, this is nine cells. So we have to fit two regions in here, uh, gray and blue, and that's not gonna work. So this can't be green, can't be blue, can't be gray. It can't be yellow, because now we already have six cells. So the closest it can get is to here. So this is another region. Um, let's make this region, suppose I don't really want to use red, um, use brown, that's going to obscure the line, uh, use like a dark purple maybe, and let me actually, I'm going to swap this yellow and this purple here just to avoid confusion. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm back again a few days after my first attempt at recording a solve of this puzzle. Um, at the point where I left off here, it was about another hour of me uh, playing around with the grid and trying to figure out what was going on. And I thought, um, you know, I got stuck at that point, decided I want to reach out to the setter to make sure I was thinking about the right things. Uh, and to provide a little bit of a nudge in case I needed it. And so I thought I'd cut the video there and then start over here again um, with a little bit more clarity on kind of where I should be looking and also maybe more efficiently go through some of the next steps uh, without having to sit through an extra hour's worth of me uh, sort of playing with the grid, but not really making a lot of progress or providing good content for you. So uh, here's my second attempt at this. Um, it's a five-star puzzle. I don't feel badly about that. Even if it was a two-star puzzle, I wouldn't feel badly about that. Um, but I do want to showcase this puzzle because there's some really cool logic here. Um, so we left off at, at the point where I discovered that this was a new region uh, because it could not uh, be a part of any of the regions that we already had. Um, the same is actually going to be true for this cell in row four, column two. Um, so again, we have these borders, uh, just to refresh um, everyone, uh, we proved that this one uh, had to be its own region because this one wasn't super interesting because green could take it and then grow out. But this region uh, can't be green uh, because if we again took the longest route around to try to get there, um, we would be isolating this three by three region or this three cell region. So it's not green. We already know it's not this pink color because uh, we already have two cells on this line. Um, again, with blue, if we gave as much space as possible, uh, we have a four by four here that would be a green region and that's not enough cells. Uh, very similar thing with gray. If we were to give space, now we have this 11 cell area that has to have two regions in it. That's not enough. And then this purple region, if it got over here somehow, um, we would end up having to have three regions uh, where we only have uh, 15 cells. And so that's not going to be enough either. So this is going to be its own color. Um, and I'll give this uh, oh, dark gray is going to work. We'll use dark gray. Now, another thing that um, I had discovered eventually, but uh, it took a while for me to see, was taking a look at these cells here, these white cells. Now, we talked about the case where blue could get out one way or could get out the other way, but is it possible for blue to not take both of these white cells? And the answer is no. It's pretty easy to see. If, if blue grew like this, for example, um, something that's not gonna break gray, uh, let's pick these. Um, if blue doesn't take this cell, 
we know yellow can't get up through here because of this line, and gray also can't get over here. So actually, if we go back a little bit, uh, blue has to take both of these cells here. Um, another thing I noticed was, taking a look once I discovered that, was how does blue grow? Um, can blue avoid taking this cell? Can it go straight across? Well, it's pretty clear to see if it, if it takes this cell, um, and we, we're trying to avoid this cell, I'll mark it with a green circle here. Um, it's going to have to take this cell to, to grow enough. Um, and uh, make, make a nine cell region. Well, here we have a, a two cell area that gray has to, um, that is the only place where gray can grow and it can't form a nine cell region there. Um, so we can't do that. Um, and if blue grows up, then again, avoiding this green cell, we're gonna do the same thing to this green region. So blue does have to take this cell here as it's growing. Now we can apply some similar logic here to the gray and the green regions. So if gray has to get out now, so either way, gray is gonna take this cell. And now again, if gray does not take this cell in row eight, column five, um, let's say it tries to get out this way, um, what region is gonna take this cell? Um, this dark purple can't get over there and yellow can't grow up. So um, this cell has to be gray. And the same thing here, green has to go one of these two directions. So it has to take this cell and it will have to take this cell as well. It doesn't have to take this one, but it does definitely have to take this to avoid isolating it. Okay, so we've got some more regions drawn in here. And we also left off with, um, with a question about um, looking at these consecutive cells. So I mentioned before that these lines, they have to have consecutive digits next to each other. So we could think of these as white croppy dots. Um, this doesn't do anything for the regions, but if you notice, we've got four pairs of consecutive digits. For every consecutive pair of digits, we have an even and an odd digit. And so we have, we're gonna have an odd and an even on each one of these lines. When any row or column of a Sudoku grid only can have four even cells. So this cell at the end of this has to be an odd digit and it can't be one. So it's three, five, seven, and nine. And the same exact thing is true with row eight, column nine. This is three, five, seven, and nine. Now, if we look at column one, again, we, we don't have the same square line here, but we do have a, uh, a line that, that basically forms a consecutive pair. So this will be three, five, seven, or nine. Again, can't be one, uh, but we don't have the same thing here. So we can't say anything about this cell quite yet. Okay, so we left off at the point here where um, I was thinking about how yellow grows. Now yellow is at a, a certain point here where it's either gonna go directly to the right along this line, because again, it can't take any more than two cells on this square, or it's gonna go straight up. It can never take this cell because if it does, we'll have three yellow cells on this line and we won't be able to have three different regions on the line. So we can do a very similar thing we did over here where we can draw in a border right here uh, because yellow can never take this cell. Um, now we know that um, yellow is gonna grow up or go to the right. If it grows up, the reason there's a border here is because there needs to be two different regions uh, in these two cells. And if, if it goes right, um, again, we need to have two different regions in, in these two cells. So no matter what, these borders are gonna be true. Now, one other thing I, I noticed was I was looking at this one and asking if it could be part of any of the existing regions. And the answer right now is no. So um, if one, the closest region it can get to is this dark purple, but even then, if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it can never actually touch the dark purple region. So we do have a new region here in row one, column nine. And if we count the number of regions in, in the grid, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we only have one more region in this entire grid. 
Now, the part that I got stuck on, um, I noticed a few things, but I didn't fully consider what was going on as I spent a lot of time looking at the bottom right of the grid because that's where the most restricted lines are. We have a few three cell lines, a four cell line. Um, these lines up here have so much real estate, it doesn't really make sense to look there. Uh, and we're not gonna really be able to tell what's going on up in that part of the grid quite yet. So let's take a look down here and try to see if we can figure out which way these regions grow and what happens to these lines down here. Now, this line here needs to have three different regions on it. If one of these is yellow, um, if uh, if one of these is not yellow, let's say this. Let's let's see what happens if yellow grows to the right, just for argument's sake. We need to get three different regions on this line. So the closest one here is purple, and then gray could reach it, potentially blue can reach it, and this aqua region can reach it. But what happens if we try to get gray over there? Let's try to grow this in the most um, efficient way possible while also letting purple out. That's the key here. So if we grow this over, and let's say we have it touch all the way over here, give, give purple as much room down here to grow as possible. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we gave, we have our grace region completed. The problem now is you see this wall that's been formed by our, our lines? Purple is not going to be able to get out in this case. So we know that gray can never touch this line. It's even worse if it, if it touches a closer one. Um, we still have this sort of border here where purple can't get out. Um, same thing as if it touches the middle. We have this wall uh, in this area formed by these borders. So gray can't be on this line. Um, if gray can't be on it, blue definitely can't be on it, but let's just prove that to ourselves. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, blue can't even reach the line, but even if it did, we see we have two regions now that we have to fill in and a, a wall here that it can't get out of. Um, let's look at green, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we drew this in to let green get over, we have to finish three regions in this area. And again, that's not going to work. Um, so in this case, we'd, uh, we only have one new region to get um, to, to put in this grid because we already have eight started. So the only regions that can reach this would be dark purple somewhere. Um, this aqua region would have to get down, and then we'd have to start our new region on one of these cells. So let's try this. Let's let's just see what happens if we draw blue uh, this blue region down here. Um, it won't be able to go over here. Um, we can show that if we need to, but I don't think we do. And then uh, if we look at purple, uh, if purple goes over here, um, we're going to have a two cell region. That's the, the new region. So let's just make purple here to give this new region room if we need to. Uh, the new region will have to get out. And then we can have any combination of these colors down here, but that's not what it, what's important. Let's take a look now at this line. This is what I hadn't appreciated the first time I looked at this. So this also needs to have three regions on it. We have the aqua color up here. Um, we could put the new region up here, but what happens if we put purple over here? Well, we can pretty clearly see, even if we give this a lot of room, we're not gonna be able to fit the peach region into this area. The most we can get is seven cells. So purple can't touch this. Gray, if we draw this over here, we now have, again, um, we have nine cells in gray, but we also need to fit two whole regions in this area, and that's not enough cells. Uh, blue won't be able to reach that, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so it can't get to the cell. Green could reach it, four, five, six, we have just enough to get there. But again, we have this sort of choke point where we have all these regions we need to, to draw down here, four different regions, and we don't have 
um, the required 36 cells down here. Uh, we have eight, 11, 14, 18, 22, 23 cells to fit all of these regions in here. So we're cutting off the grid um, where these regions won't be able to escape. There's probably a lot of other reasons that breaks. Um, the only other region that can get there is gray. If we try to find a nice, um, efficient way to get over there, there's not a really good way without breaking this line, but let's, let's ignore that line. Again, we've got five regions we have to fit in this bottom part of the grid. The other way to think about it is we've used up all of our regions except for purple and aqua. And we have to, we have this whole area up here in the grid where we don't have any new regions. Remember, we have nine regions already. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine regions in the grid. And so this is just cutting the grid in half to get over to this line here. And so um, if we counted the cells down here, you'd see that we wouldn't be able to fit all five of these regions down here. So that means that we can't get a third region to this line and this line is broken. And now um, this is very difficult to visualize. I missed it. Um, I had to ask the setter just to make sure I was looking in the right spot. Um, I had been considering these lines down here, but I, I did not consider this line in combination. So once you get down on paper, you can see it, but um, this is why it's earned its five-star rating. This is, this is definitely a five-star step, but it's a very cool step. Um, we have just enough restrictions to not be able to fill, fulfill this line. So what that tells us is this yellow region cannot grow to the right um, because it ends up breaking this line, uh, specifically because this line needs to have all the different regions on it, including the, the last of the nine regions. And then we end up breaking uh, one of these lines coming across. So we have confirmation that yellow does go up. And we can draw this border in here. Now purple has to get out. And gray has to get out. Uh, the most is going to have four, five, six, so it still needs quite a few cells. Blue has to get out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it would have to go out to at least there. Green also has to get out. It only has four, so green can go up this way. Uh, this dark gray goes up. And now this uh, purple region has to go up at least to here. Now remember, purple can take this cell. Uh, so this would be nine cells if it, if it did this. So we get a whole lot of borders. We definitely get rewarded for making that deduction about yellow. Okay. So now we're still at the point we have to ask the question, um, which region goes down here? And in this case, this um, if purple, for example, went down here, um, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, number one, we don't have enough cells to get down there, but Number two, we have a two cell area here that's been isolated, not purple. And if it's not purple, none of the other regions are gonna be able to reach it. That's way too many cells. And this aqua color region can't reach it either because this would be 10 cells. So this is actually our ninth region that ends up down here. Now the question becomes, now we have all nine regions thrown in. We don't have to use any new colors. We have to use everything that we have in the grid now to, to fulfill these lines. Um, so what region is taking this cell? We can try to use this aqua color region. Um, easier to see is this, like all of these regions, none of them are gonna be, be able to reach down this far. Um, even gray, which is the closest, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's the closest they can get uh, to row E column eight. So it's either going to be purple or aqua that's going to get down there. Now, if it's aqua and it takes this route, we're going to see it does um, five, six, seven, it does have nine cells, but we've isolated peach off with only five cells to grow. So we can't go that way. Um, what if we go around to the left? and give it more room, well, you're going to see pretty pretty obviously that this is way too many cells for aqua. Um, so this has to be 
a different color. And it can't be the new region, the peach region, because we need a third color on this square line here. So this has to be purple. Now, another cool thing about this is can, uh, can yellow take this cell? Um, if it does, it forces purple up here. And now look at this four cell line. We have three cells that are purple on this line. Um, if we avoid that, um, there's no way to actually connect around to give yellow room to grow to this cell. And I'll just um, I'll highlight this so we're all on the same on the same page here. Um, we already showed that this breaks this line. Uh, if we try to go around, that's way too many cells, uh, even though yellow would have room to get up there. So this cell has to be, it can't be yellow. So we have a border here. And now if we count yellow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yellow has to take this cell in the corner. And now we've resolved uh, row nine, column one. And we're also gonna see purple has to grow out this way to get its ninth cell for the region. And now the purple region is done. And the yellow region is done. Okay, now this region has to grow out to at least here. That's given it six cells. Okay, so another thing that I'm noticing at this point, and this is um, beyond the part where I had looked uh, and gotten some help from the setter. Um, so now we're back to a live solve of me trying to, to figure out uh, this puzzle. So if purple doesn't take this cell, where is purple going? Or what, what, what region takes this cell, rather? Um, Anything else that gets down here is going to basically cut this purple region in half. So if if another region like aqua came down here, now how is purple connecting? There's no way. So this is definitely purple. And purple needs to take two more cells. OK, I think maybe we want to think about this line again and what happens if purple does not take a cell on this line can we get three different regions on here two three four five six seven eight so a gray could just barely reach the cell but we've cut purple off where now it can't get its eighth and ninth cells so gray can't get over here Blue can't because it doesn't have enough cells. It already has at least eight. So this can only grow one more. And all these other ones are too far away. Even three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This can't reach down. So this has to take, there has to be a purple cell on this line, along with a peach cell and an aqua cell. Now we only have seven, we already have seven, so we only have two left to grow. So the only cell on this line that the purple region can reach is this one, because this would be eight, nine, and 10 cells to get over here. So this is purple. And now our peach region has to grow out three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this needs one more. And now this has to be aqua. Don't know how it grows down there yet, but it does have to be there. Okay, uh, I'm noticing this region has to grow a little bit more. And that's helpful for a couple of reasons. So I'm looking at this, um, this line here, this branching line. It already has three regions on it. So we can't have anything on this line except for blue, green, and dark gray. 
Uh, so for example, this gray region cannot grow up past this cell uh, because it would put a fourth region on this line and that's not allowed by the rules. So if gray takes all of these cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it only has seven cells. So it has to go out into this, uh, it has to grow at least two over here, uh, but we don't know which one, but it definitely has to take this cell. Now this purple region has to finish. It has uh, eight cells already. So we know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the only cell that it can take is this cell here. So that's the end of our dark purple region. And this line, if we check it, it has three regions on it. So we're okay there. This one has three regions. This has three regions. So we've so far satisfied all the rules. Uh, this gray region we said needs to take two cells over here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has to take this cell to get its ninth cell because it can't, again, can't get on this line. And now gray can't touch this cell because we need three different regions on this line. So we get a little bit of a, we get a border here. Now four, five, six, seven, eight. We need a, a, a ninth cell. Um, we don't know if it grows up yet. It depends on if it takes this cell. But right now, for we have eight cells in gray. We have a new border here. Our aqua region has to grow up. And so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And our peach region goes here. And that's the end of our peach region. Now aqua has to grow left. Okay, now we can ask the question, uh, I think about this line is where I'm looking next, this three cell line. Again, we have to get three different regions on there. I'm trying to see if it's possible that aqua does not go on that line. I think it might just be possible. Um, what I'm looking at is, this blue region has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it could take this cell. And then green would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So green could take this cell. And then we, we would have the line be satisfied and that would be okay. 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 So this big line I think is gonna be helpful now. As we said before, we already have three colors on this. So the only colors allowed on this line here are dark gray, green, and blue. So aqua cannot be on this line at all. Now that leaves this area for aqua because um, it can't get any farther than that. And that's four, five, six, seven, that's exactly nine cells. So this has to be our aqua region because those are the only cells available to it. Okay, aqua is done. Uh, if we want to do some Sudoku for a minute, let's look at row uh, column nine and the peach region. Where does one go in the peach region? One is here, so it can't be in any of these cells. So this is a one. And that's important for, for the square line. So remember, we have to have consecutive digits. Uh, um, every uh, pair of digits has to be consecutive on the line if they're adjacent. So this one can only be adjacent to twos. And now this is either a one or a three. I'm doing some more, I guess I'll call it a regular Sudoku. I'm looking at one in the yellow region, can't be in any of these cells. So the one has to be up here somewhere. Now the one can't be in this cell because this would be, this would need to be a two to be consecutive with one. And we already have a two there. So this has to be our one. Um, there's another interesting re reason why this has to be a one, but Sudoku helps us there. The other reason is because if this wasn't a one, let's say this was a three for some reason, um, we need to put one in this row. I did notice this the first time through the puzzle. Um, wherever we put the one, it has to be next to a two, but the two's already taken. So if we put the one here, for example, this would have to be a two and we'd break the puzzle. So there's a couple of different ways to see that. But... This one I think is the most straightforward looking at the rules.
mine was only gained by floundering around for an hour on the puzzle. Um, okay, so I think that might be all the Sudoku we can do right now, but that's okay. That's um, We'll take a look at this later once we finish the regions, I, guess, I think. So um, gray, we looked at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The only um, way to complete the gray region is if it takes this cell. So we've finished our gray region. Now the only way blue can connect together is if it takes this cell. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So blue goes either up here. Well, it can't do that actually. If blue takes this cell as its last cell, look at green. It only has five cells and it's blocked off. So blue has to go here. And that's the end of blue. Now green has to grow out. Three, four, five, six. So it has to take three more cells. So the question now is, can this cell be green? Um, it does reach three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but we've isolated off these four dark gray cells. So this has to be dark gray. So this needs three more cells. If green grows up, it has to take this cell because it can't go straight up here. It'll block off gray again. Um, if green grows here, um, is this enough? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, so green has to take this cell no matter what because um, it's either going to go like this or like this. Uh, can't go up and avoid that cell uh, without breaking dark gray. Uh, kind of like we did before, what region takes this cell? It can't be dark gray. Uh, because it, it can't get through green, so this has to be green. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So now green can only take one more cell, one of these three. Um, so both of these are gray. If this is gray, it has to connect to its region, so this is gray. But now we're left basically with a situation where, ah, so one of these is green and one of these is gray because each of these have eight cells in it. If this was gray, then look at this line. This line only has two regions on it, so that would be broke. Uh, so this is green and this is gray, and we finished our regions here. So we can draw on our borders. And we now have some nice regions, and we can do a combination of a regular Sudoku and also taking a look at these, these lines here. Okay, and I am not the greatest at a regular Sudoku, but I'm gonna give this a shot and give this my best chance. So if we look up here, we have these twos looking up um, into this aqua region. So none of these cells can be two. So this region needs a two, so it needs to go here. And using our consecutive rule, we know this is one or three, and this is two or four. Okay, this purple region needs a one in it. And again, these ones look up. And so one has to be in one of these three cells. One can't be here because it would be adjacent to, it would put twos here and break both regions. Um, so we can't put one there, but more importantly, these ones look up and make this a three. Okay. Um, trying to see where else I can find some restricted digits. See this column needs a one in, in this peach because it can't go here. So one of these has to be one. It can't be this one because it would, it would place a two here and we'd have two twos in the row. So that's not one. Um, and this also can't be neither. This can't be one because it would put a two here. Uh, it, actually, no, that's wrong. This can't be a one 
because of the Sudoku, but if this is one puts uh, two up here. So we have a lot of room for ones right now. Uh, one in this dark gray region. Uh, can't go in any of those cells, so we're left with one in, in some of these. This one can't be one because it would place a two here. We've already got a two in the column. This can't be one because it would put a two here and, and clash with that. And I'm going to pick a different color for this. Um, I'm actually going to make this one yellow as well, just so we can see what's going on with the, the Sudoku candidates. Just realize it's difficult to see. OK, so we have one in one of these cells. Let me get the columns. So we need one in these cells here. This can't be a one because we'll put a two here. That doesn't seem very restricted. And I don't like doing pencil marks kind of across regions like that. So I'll try to avoid that. Um, we do know that one in gray is in one of these cells. Not those. I guess I'll pencil mark that. Sometimes what you look for in these uh, regulars are like swordfishes on ones, but I don't think we're going to get that in this puzzle. Uh, two in gray. Two in gray is in the same spot that one is. But I don't think I want to pencil mark that. Okay, so these have to be consecutive. Where should I be looking? Sometimes we can use, um, don't know if it's gonna be helpful here. But there's this uh, concept in a regular Sudoku called law of leftovers. Yeah, and it's not going to be helpful in this case. But basically, it's it's kind of an uh, extension of set theory where we know there's going to be three sets of the digits, one to nine, in these three columns. We also know there's going to be three sets of the digits, one to nine, in these three regions. And you see these kind of cells that are sticking out of the original first three columns. And so these, and there's also holes in the original three columns where there's these four cells that are not highlighted. And so what that tells us is that these four cells that are sticking out of the first or the last three columns in the, in the grid have to uh, correspond to these four cells that are kind of the holes that were left over. And what that tells you is that like any digits that go in these four cells are the same digits that go in, in the four cells in column seven. So we have the two accounted for, and the one is accounted for in one of these two cells. So the other digits, the other two digits that go with the one here are gonna go in these two cells, but that might be too early to look at. I'm trying to see what I might want to do. It's too early, I think, to look at this little killer clue because we don't have enough about the regions yet. So three, three in row nine either has to go here or it has to go on one of these consecutive pairs with a four um, because it can't be consecutive with two. So if the three goes here, I'm 
it would put four in both of these, and it would put a five here. And that seems okay, because the three couldn't be three because of the three in the region already. Actually, this can't be three because of the Sudoku, but if we do it the other way, um, this would be three, both of these would be four, and this would be five. That would force three here, but uh, because the four would be uh, the five would be taken with the four in that case, and so there would be you couldn't put three consecutive with anything because the two and the four would be used up. So we would go here. I do know that this cell is the same as this cell. It's by Sudoku. Like the the region sees this cell. So it would have to go here. I mean, we can mark that like this if we want to. And then this cell in the yellow region would have to go in one of these two cells. I hope my meeting worked there. I'm going to go get a glass of water. I'll be right Okay, sorry about that. I just had a little bit of a coughing fit, but we're back. Apologize as well for if you hear the fireworks in the background. It's the 3rd of July as the recording of this puzzle, and so people are in the United States are celebrating. Okay, so I was looking at this digit, and in the yellow region, it's going to go in one of two cells. Uh, don't think we know enough about that yet, though, but it's something we can kind of keep in mind. I don't want to mark that. Um, I do notice that in this yellow region, these two cells in row nine have to go here. And so the ones are taken care of. So the other way to think about that is where does this cell go in the yellow region? Can't go in any of these cells. It can't go here because one is not a candidate. So this is actually three, five, seven, nine, and will be a good bit of a blue circle. So we know they're the same digit. And that's interesting for the line because you can kind of think of these lines as parity lines. They'll alternate parity because they have to be consecutive. Um, so this is odd always. So this is four, six, or eight. And this is also three, five, seven, nine. And you have four odd cells in the column, which is interesting. Interesting to know if like one of these couldn't be odd, but like if this is odd, these two are even, and that would give us four even cells in the column. But I don't see a problem with that because like these would be odd. You'd have four odd digits, so again, two of these would have to be even. So we have three even digits in this column, but maybe later in the puzzle that'll be that'll be helpful, but not yet. So maybe it is this 18 diagonal. It's really the only clue we haven't thought about. And I don't see any more obvious or regular Sudoku, though it's possible I'm missing something there. Um, like for example, this blue circle and the purple region, yeah, it, could, it could go in a lot of cells. Okay, let's think about this. So 18, we do have some restrictions on like the minimum digits, especially this one. This is these one, two, and three. So the minimum for this cell is four. Uh, this cell sees one and two, so the minimum is three. It's already seven. Uh, minimum here is two, because it sees a one. So it's nine, so these, these cells have to be a maximum of nine. Oh, and there, 
So these are going to be the same parity because these are connected this way. So if it's minimized, it's 1, 3, which would be 4. It's always going to be an even sum because if you add two odd digits together, you get an even number. If you add two even digits together, you get an even number. So those are 4, 6, or 8. And it could be 4 would be 1, 3, 6 would be 1, 5, 2, 4. And 8 would be 1, 7, 2, 6, or 3, 5. So we got a few options, but from the work we did before with the 1s, none of these can be 1. And this one, and then we have a 1 in purple, has to be in one of these two. So they can't be 1. So would we say the highest, if, if the sum was 8, it could be up to it could be up to 7, but that's with 1, 7. So it had to be 2, 6. Oh, not this cell, these two. So this can't be two or three. Oh, so it can't be two six because they're connected like a crop key chain. So you can't go from two to six in one jump. You'd go two, three, six. That doesn't work. So if it can't be 2, 6, then 6 can't be part of the sum because the maximum is 8. Because the, uh, uh, the, the actual maximum for the 18 cell, if these are minimized, this is 9, so these are 9. So the only other way number you could use a 6 with would be a 4, and that, that's too much. That's 10. So there can't be a 6 in these cells. Um, if, it's, if this is 5... This would have to be, it couldn't be 5, so it'd have to be 3. This would be 3, 4, 5. Which would be okay. Could we go 3, 4, 5? Um, but this couldn't be a 5, because you can't go 5, 4, 5. This, could, this would add to 10, and that'd be too much. Plus, it'd be two fives in the region. Uh, so if this is 4... This can't be 4, so that would be a 2. So it would go 2, 4. Oh. OK. So if this is 2, 4, we would need to have a 3 here. It would go 2, 3, 4 to be consecutive. But what's this cell? If I write this in, I'm just going to use the superscripts to make this clear. So we have 2, 4 to make 6, and then we'd have a 3 here to join the 2 and the 4. But to, for, this has to be consecutive with 3, so this has to be 4. But now we've got a 2 and a 4 here, and now this cell's broken. Oh, man. Okay, I, I like that step a lot. Um, so this has to be 3, 5. That is way more restricted than I thought it would be. Uh, and this has to be joined by a 4. Uh, and this has to be a 5. Uh, this has to be 4 or 6. This has to be 3 or 7. Again, just looking at the op opposing parity, and this can't be a 5. Okay, I don't want to go too much farther because I might miss candidates there, but it's going to be, this could either be 3, 5, or 7, but not 5. Uh, and this is 4 or 6. So now what about this? So this is an eight. So these have to be a maximum of 10, or they have to sum to 10, but it's a minimum of nine. So we only have one degree of freedom. So it's either two, three, four. It could go three, three, four. So this could be a three, but no higher. Um, it can go two, three, five. So they can go up to five, and this could go up to four. Uh, this cell is known now because we have a 4 looking down, so that's a 2. Uh, 2 in gray has to go in one of these two cells, and it's not this one, so 2 is here. Okay. Um, what else? 
else can we do? Uh, this is either six or eight. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, this can't be four and it can't be two. So it has to be even, so it has to be six or eight. So this can't be three anymore. This has to be a seven. And then this is, it's odd. So this is, it can only be five, seven or nine, but it sees a five and seven. So that's a nine, that's an eight. Really sorry about the fireworks. I hope that's not coming through too much. Um, so what can this cell be? It'd be one, two, three, can't be four, five, could be six. If it's one, that's two. Oh, so this can't be a two because it sees one and three. So this can't be two. This, so our two in green is down here. Um, if this is three, that's two or four. And if it's six, this is five. So it's either two, four, or five. Okay. Did we get anything else down here? Is over here. Oh, okay, so interesting. So in yellow, we've got twos looking over here, and then the twos look up, and this two looks up. So the two in yellow is in one of these two. So if this is two, this is one or three. So this is only one, two, or three, because either this is the two with a one, three adjacent to it, or it's a two itself. And so this cell sees a four and a five, so it can't go up from three. So this is also one, two, or three, but it's not a one. Why is this not? Oh, because it, um, this can't be a two. So this is two or three. And so this is as high as four, so it's one, three, or four. It can't be a two. Seven, okay, so eight in yellow, can't go here. So eight is in, oh, eight is right here, actually, because this looks, this sees the two open cells, that's neat. I like that geometry. So this is an eight. So None of these are one, and this isn't a two. So these are both seven or nine, and this seven makes this a nine, and this could still be either. Uh, and this is six or eight. Uh, so what do we still need in green? We need one, two, three, and six. This is one and six. One is in one of these two, so this is not one, two, three, or six. And this can still be any of those. And we still need a seven in yellow, but seven can't go here, so seven goes up here. And so this is not seven or three. So it's either five or nine. This is, oh, this can't be a three because we've got a three in the region already. So one of, one of these two cells is a two. It either goes one, two, or it goes three, two. So I guess we already know that two, well, we know that two can't go here, but that makes it so this can't be two. Uh, this can't be two, and this can't be two. So two and peach is in one of these two cells. All right, I'll take it. Um, 
this is four or five and it can't go down to three. So this is four, five, or six and always contains a five. So this can't be a five. Oh, we have a four, five, six triple in the row. So that's a one. Okay, so this is two, three, or six. Uh, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven or nine for the row. Um, what about two, two and pink has quite a few spots it can still go in. What can this cell be? Because we know it's down here. So it's, it can't be one or two, because that sees that. It can't be three. It could be four. Uh, could be five or six. Can't be seven. Can't be eight. Can't be nine. So this is four, five, or six. Okay, so now where does two grow in row one? Two can't go in these two cells because of this two. Uh, so the only place for two is here. And so this is a one, this is a two. This can't be four. Okay, here's something interesting. So we know the one in column one is gonna be on one of the lines and it has to be consecutive with the two. So if we put the one down here, the two's already taken up here. So the one actually has to go in this cell. Um, yellow still needs a four and a six. This is nice and smooth at the end here. It, it's, it's tricky. It's definitely earning its five star rating, but uh, you know, it seems like it's, you're able to kind of see where to look at, at most points in this puzzle. Uh, so in this row, we still need three, four, six, and nine. So one of these two is a nine. Um, one of these two is five. What is this? Mm, this is anywhere between three and seven. I guess I'll mark it. Um, hmm. Okay, so these aren't one. Now, if this is a two, this is a three, they're both threes. That's okay so far. Seven is on one of these, and uh, just seven. Um, up here, we need four, five, six, and nine, and an eight. So there's an eight up here that we haven't placed yet. And so now eight in row two has to go here because it can't go in these two cells. So we get an eight. I'm following eights around the grid now because that seems interesting. But looks like we still got a lot of room for eights in these regions here. Uh, so we still haven't resolved these yet. Okay, one of these is a two. Don't think we know yet. Here's what I was talking a little bit before about with swordfish. It's one of these two is a two and then one of these two is a two. So none of these can be twos, but that's already true by Sudoku. So that doesn't really help us here, unfortunately. Uh, I don't see any real restrictions, like from the standpoint of like, what, what can this be? If this is a two, we've got a three. If it's three, it goes next to a four. It's six, it goes next to five or seven.
Um, okay. Well, it's not quite going to give us a digit, but where does 9 go in this column? Uh, 9 can't go in either of these cells because neither of these can be an 8. And 9 can't go in either of these cells because these can't be an 8. So the 9 is either here or here. Um, and so the 9 is a little bit of a sort of a finned X-wing type thing on nines uh, in like this aqua region and the, in the pink region. So this is a nine. That's interesting. That's going to give us a digit. That's cool. Uh, so let me um, see if I can keep these cells highlighted. So these are all the places for nine in row one and in row four. So if this cell was a nine, that would remove nine from these two cells. And that would place a nine here. I would take that, so these would both be nine. Is that a problem? No, actually that works. I thought for, I thought that that was gonna rule out nine from too many places, but it actually just works because nine and purple can still go in one of these three. Maybe we've got to think about nines in row nine. We haven't thought about that yet. So nine is in one of these. Oh, it could also be here, but I'm wondering if it can be on one of these lines. Uh, nine can't go here. So nine is in one of these three, or it's here. Okay, what about eights in row eight. I'm seeing a lot of eights. I'm just looking at the cells, uh, the digits that are looking down. So eight can't go here or here. So the only places for eights are these four cells. Um, if this was an eight, this would be a nine. Yeah, that all seems okay, unfortunately. Eight can't go here because this can't be a seven. Um, Eight can't go here because this would be seven or nine, and those are both taken. So the eight is actually on that line. That might be helpful. I will mark that across boxes. So because there's an eight, this is a seven, eight, nine triple. It's either going to up, go up or down. And these are from six, seven, eight, and nine. This one can't be a one. Okay, well, it's a little, it's something, but this cell can't be a three. Uh, because if this is three, this is four, and this is five, and that's our, our total of nine uh, plus eight would be 17. And so this would need to be a one, and it can't. So this can't be a three. But this could be a four, because this would be three, five. And this, so that would be eight plus eight is 16. This could be two, so that's okay. So three is in one of these two places. Oh, so this, actually this can just never be a four. If this is a four, this is a five and that's nine. Yeah, so this just can't be a four. This is a three. Um, so we haven't used our degree of freedom yet from from our diagonal, so this could still be either way. But we made some progress. Uh, threes, looking into this, so three in purple has to be in one of these two. If this was three, this would go three, four, five. And this would be a two and that would be okay. Can this be a three? That would make this a four, five, six. Yeah, that seems okay. Just looking across three, four, five, two. This would be six. This would be eight. I think that's okay. So 
this is a three. This could be two or four. This would be four. Three, four. Oh, this can't be this can't be three. Okay, this can't be three because this would have to be two or four, but it can't be a two. So this would go three, four, and then this would have to be three or five, but it can't be either. So this can't be a three. So this is our three here, which makes this four and this five. That takes our degree of freedom. So we have a total of 16 on this diagonal. This is a two. Okay, good. Got some more progress. This four looks over making this a six. This makes this a three. Uh, still don't know which one of these is which. Uh, we have two, three looking over. So this is what we did before when I was visualizing. This is a six. Uh, this is a three and a six, so this is a two. This has to be a three because it can't be a four for some, or it can't be a one. Yeah, because of this one, that's a three. This can't be a one, so this is a three. And this can't be a two, so this is a four. Okay, got a whole bunch of digits there. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something on the grid. Um, this is six and seven. So this is not a six, uh, just for the row. Um, this is four, eight, and nine for the region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, this can't be a six, so that's an eight. So we need five, seven, and nine. This can't be a nine because this can't be an eight. Uh, so this is odd. So this has to be even. So that's four or six. So that's four or six. And that's oh, that's that's really cool. We got a four six pair here now. Uh, so we could take four out of these cells. We got an eight nine pair. So this has to be a five. This is a seven. This is a nine. Uh, that's seven. That's six. And so this is six. This is four, this, oh, and I broke the puzzle. What did I do wrong? Yeah, I should have seen this right away because this is, this is a four, six pair seeing this cell. Let me go back. I want to go all the way back to this point uh, because I should have seen when did I get this four six pair okay right here okay I'm gonna I'm gonna start from here this is a four six pair so this if the, this can't be four or six so this has to be a five so this is a nine this is a seven this can still be six or eight, uh, but we know that this row or this uh, column needs a five. And so the only place for it is here. Uh, it takes five out of here and five out of here. I'm gonna take this from another direction, see if that helps. Um, okay, so we already used the one. In this column, we need three, four, six and eight so there needs to be an odd digit um, on on this pair because we have the one five seven and nine taken up so this has to be three with a four so it takes three and four out of here this five means this has to be a six this has to be an eight this nine also said that uh, this has to be four or six and that goes with this four, six, so this is two or three. Uh, this can be three, five, or seven. Can't be a five, so this is three or seven. And it can't be a three, because that's not consecutive as six. So that's a seven. Uh, this column needs a two and a three, so this has to be a three, two, three, and a four. 
that can't be 3, which means this can't be 3 because this digit goes here in row 9. Uh, that's 7, 9, this can't be a 4, so this can't be a 3. Okay, this is 4, 6, and 8, so we had that right before. This 2 means this is a 3. This goes 5, this is a 7, so this has to be a 6. So we have a 4, 5 pair here, the 7 makes this a 9. I'm going to go very slowly uh, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. I don't know what the mistake I made was, but I did something wrong. I may have mismarked one of the lines um, with having invalid candidates. Just double checking my lines here. Uh, they all look okay. Okay. Uh, what did I just do? six, seven, and eight into this row, and we, we meet eight in row one. So these can't be eight. So this is an eight. We have a six, seven pair, so these are not six. Uh, four, eight pair makes this a six, which makes this a four, which makes this a three. Take three and four out of here. The six, seven pair means this is a nine and this is a six. All right, we have 8 and 10, 11. So we need 6 here. Uh, 7 here. Maybe I did math wrong. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these have to add to 7, which can still be done in a couple ways. Okay, uh, this sees a 2 and a 3, so this needs to be a 6. Uh, this 4 looks down, making this a 6. Um, this column needs 3, 4, 5, and 8. Uh, these can't have 3 because of this 3 in the region. So this is a 3. Uh, the 3 has to be consecutive with the 4. Uh, that gives this 4 can't be consecutive with the 3, so that's a 5. And then this, since this goes up to 5, this has to be a 4. Uh, this has to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This 1 or 9. And that 9 tells us the order. Uh, that's not a 1. This row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 7, 8, or 9. That, that looks good because this needs an 8 because of that. Even's being taken up. Uh, this is a 5 and a 7. So this row needs 3, 8, and 9. And so there can't be a 3 here because there's nothing to be consecutive with it. So that's the 3. That's the 2. Hope I did this right this time. Uh, okay, 8, 9, and we're good there. This 9 makes this an 8, and this a 9. So this is an 8. So we got a 7, 9 pair, which is good because these two are the same digit. So if this, whatever this is, is, these are the same. That works. Um, okay. What does this column need? It needs a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Uh, this is a 1, 6, 9, so this is just a 7, which means this is a 9. This is a 7, this is a 7. That's not a 7. Uh, these are not 7 or 9, so that's a 1, 6 pair. And so this region needs a 4. It goes there. This column needs a 1 and a 7. The 7 sees that. One, seven, six, one. Okay. This seven looks up, makes this six and this seven. Uh, four, five, and eight for the column. Three, four, five, six, and eight. Uh, this can't be four or eight. 
uh, because it needs to be consecutive with the four, so that's five. Uh, this has to be consecutive with five, so this is four or six. That gives us a four, six, eight triple in the column, so this is a five and a four. Let me just check this math. That's eight, 11, 16, 18. Perfect. Uh, so one, two, this needs a three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is a three. That's consecutive with four. And this column still needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this nine sees this is a five, nine. This has to be an eight, four, six is consecutive with the fives. This five makes this an eight and this is five. And the four looks up, making this an eight and a four. And whew, solution to the puzzle. Um, I don't think that's accurate. Um, I, there was a, a while there where I was just kind of staring at the grid and had this pause while I was reaching out to the mass of 92. Um, this is an amazing puzzle, difficult. Um, definitely would agree with the five-star rating. Um, I really like the beginning of the puzzle with the kind of the deciding which way these regions were going to go and then kind of seeing how they were going to grow out very gradually. Um, this spot using all these lines put together uh, combined with having to figure out you only had one region left to place where those regions could reach to. I really enjoyed that part, that sort of pathfinding um, and drawing in those borders to kind of visualize where those walls were. Uh, and we kind of, we didn't have to do really any Sudoku until we had the regions built. And I was a little surprised. Um, whenever I see little killer clues in puzzles, this is a fault of mine. I always assume it's like a disambiguation for the end of the puzzle, but this was used pretty early to, once we restricted like where the ones, twos and threes could go. Um, we got some restrictions here and the use of parity there. Several places in the puzzle was great. So really appreciate you sticking with this video. I had a lot of fun. Thank you, Demasisos, for um, the puzzle. Thanks, Bremster, for suggesting I solve it for the channel. Uh, bye, everyone, for now. Take care, and um, we'll talk to you all soon.